talk is about not, not just Cisco, but essentially we want to bring in our collaborators from academia and we want to talk about uh, how our academic collaborators are deploying federated, or at least thinking of deploying federated OpenStack uh, on IPv6 backbones and you know, their experiences and what we can do. And I hope this will be an uh, interactive session. And uh, initially, uh, we'll kick it off with Mei Wong from Cisco giving a short blurb about exactly who we are, or this part of uh, that, that's related to the talk. And so a background about May. May has more than 10 years of experience doing IPv6 at Cisco, all the way when Steve Deering uh, uh, and everybody else did the seminal stuff on IPv6. And May Wong is right now a principal engineer and the head of Asia Pacific uh, Research. So she leads all research engagement. So if you have, uh, if you're from an academic organization and you want to plugged into, get plugged into our research program, please come and talk to her. Thank you for the uh, introduction, Devil. And yeah, as Devil mentioned, this is a, a collaborate uh, project. It's led by, uh, there are several parties involved. It's actually, within Cisco, is led by two groups. Uh, our group, Cisco Research, and uh, Devil's team, which is the uh, CTO uh, office of the cloud, uh, and Devil and Lou Tucker's team. So we work very uh, closely. And uh, our collaborators in academia are three top universities from uh, China. And uh, as the names here shown, from Tsinghua University, uh, Professor Xing Li, uh, Cong Xiaobao, and um, I'm sorry? The slides change. Yeah, yeah, I just want to show, show the names because they are um, uh, at, also uh, uh, Fred Baker, Cisco Fellow, uh, they have to be at IETF this week, so they cannot be here. Um, but uh, uh, professor students uh, are going to do their presentation here. And the highlighted names are the presenters uh, for today. And uh, Professor Liang, uh, Liang Cai and Qi uh, Fei Zhang from Zhejiang University, and Professor Yao Huijin and uh, uh, Xuan Luo from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, so the goal of this uh, collaboration is to um, help solve the research problems we're seeing in the uh, cloud environment, especially uh, 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 OpenStack-based cloud environment. And not only we want to address these problems, we want to provide academia solutions, we want to provide um, algorithms, but we also want to bring in bigger impact via a large-scale deployment on the um, academic uh, campus network environment. That's one of the key reasons we want to collaborate with these universities, because all these three universities are nodes of CERNET, which is uh, China Education and Research Network. Uh, the largest uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron, Enron research network in China, and CERNI2 is actually the largest pure IPv6 backbone in the whole world. So we hope to um, 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 uh, uh, leverage this kind of uh, platform and environment. So there are lots of uh, interesting research questions we want to look into, but to uh, begin with, we want to really focus on IPv6 in data center. Um, as the, due to the exhaustion of IPv4 addresses, we are seeing increasing deployment of IPv6. At the same time, we also got lots of requests from our customers asking for a simpler and more scalable uh, network infrastructure and data center. And we believe IPv6 is a key to provide this kind of uh, platform and solution. So, and we want to do this in like three steps. The first one, we want to analyze the existing IPv6 uh, implementation in OpenStack. And that will be the key part of today's presentation. We got some, um, uh, Tsinghua University got some very initial results they like to uh, present today. And then after that, we hope to work together with the community to uh, design a native IPv6 infrastructure in data center with uh, IPv6 in mind, instead of having the IPv4 mindset and design the IPv6 uh, uh, infrastructure. Then after we have the prototype, we have the uh, uh, code in OpenStack, on, on top of this platform, there are lots of very interesting issues or uh, questions we need to address. For example, the uh, address allocation and management in IPv6 and the routing 
uh, schemes for uh, IP, native IPv6 in data center. And we believe overall this will provide a, a, a better solution in terms of performance and scalability. And because it's a, a simpler uh, network, simpler infrastructure, and we also hope it can uh, reduce the overall cost. So other than the uh, IPv6 in data center, we are also seeing lots of very interesting research topics. And so the, uh, the uh, uh, one part of today's presentation, we want to give you an example on some of the other research uh, uh, questions we're looking into. And that will be the uh, presentation from Zhejiang University. They have done some improvement on storage, basically providing an effective um, file system that can handle large amount, small file size, and that supports uh, IPv6. And that can be a service uh, added to uh, OpenStack. So um, without further ado, we'd like to um, invite the uh, um, uh, speaker, uh, uh, Yi Bai from Tsinghua University, to talk about the um, IPv6 analysis in Neutron. And this is still based on a uh, Grizzly release. And we understand there's a new release, uh, Havana, coming up. And there's improvement on IPv6 implementation. And uh, uh, Tsinghua is going to continue the work uh, towards a uh, Havana release. Thank you. And also, because we're trying to squeeze in lots of content within a short amount of time, so we'd like the presenters finish their talk. And then we'll address all the questions together at the end. And good morning, everybody. I'm Yi Bai from Tsinghua University, and I'm a graduate student. And today, I'm very glad to be here representing our team to share some of our recent work with IPv6 in Newton and give a brief uh, analysis about IPv6 support in Newton. So the first thing I'd, I'd like to talk about is the motivation. And as we know, OpenStack Cloud's deployment needs huge amounts of IP addresses for the management or for the tenant network. But, but we also know that IPv4 address is exhausting currently. So the support for the IPv6 inside the cloud will be a basic requirement in the future. And today, we will focus on the two key problems in Neutron, uh, Neutron's tenant network. The first one is IPv6 address automated assignment. And the second one is IPv6 routing mechanisms. So the second thing I would like to talk about is the IPv6 backbone. And that is CERNET2, stands for the Chinese Education Research Net and it's a pure IPv6 environment, which enables us to simplify our, our examination with our work. And it connects over 200 universities and provides IPv6 services for more than 3 million users. And our final goal is to deploy a federated uh, OpenStack system between these three universities. So here is a brief comparison between IPv4 and IPv6. Besides a larger address pool, there are man many new features in the IPv6. And some of these features is, is not compatible with IPv4. And, and we, we know that Neutron is, is now designed in the philosophy of IPv4, so we should extend our uh, extend Neutron to support IPv6. The first one is uh, we know that Neutron uses NAT to connect, to build a connection between the internal and external network. And uh, Neutron uses, also uses NAT to, uh, to, the, to implement some function like floating IP. But the NAT is depreciate in IPv6. So here we'll bring some challenges here. And some of the IPv some of the features in IPv4 is also updated. Uh, like I ARP is, is updated to neighbor discovery and uh, private address is updated and renamed the uh, unique local address. Also 
and benefit from the larger address pool. There are many new address configuration, configuration mechanisms in IPv6, like the stateless out, automated assignment and its privacy extensions. This, these new mechanisms should be integrated into the new chain. So with, with those differences, differences, and we think the IPv4 and IPv6 is not compatible with each other. And there are several, several transitional, transitional chess technologies are raised. And one of them is called the translation technologies. It can provide stateless translation between IPv4 and IPv6 to provide bidirectional initiated communication and it's defining these ITF RFCs. So uh, we assume that the IPv4 only cloud and those existing clouds will, will exist, still exist for a very long time. So we are working on deploy the translation technologies to provide the IPv6 internet accessible to, the, to those IPv4 existing clouds. And here is a brief, uh, a, a typical topology of network, tenant network in IPv4 currently in Neutron. And there are several key points here. As the external network use, uses the global address and the private network, or we call it internal network uses the private addresses. addresses. And, and here in the guest A, uh, Neutron uses uh, a mechanism called floating IP as a secondary IP address for the guest to be accessible from the outside in internet. And uh, floating IP is implemented by the, by the IP aliasing and the net. So these this mechanisms work perfectly for IPv4. So we, we decided not to move it in, inside the cloud, and we deploy a translator at the edge of cloud to make the IPv6 internet accessible to the IPv4 cloud. And here in the chart is how it works. You can see that the address is converted for several times, uh, both for the source address and the destination address. And those, those com the key, key points to the, those conversion Conversion is that uh, a global IPv6 address is, uh, is bound to um, a global I or private I IPv4 address inside the cloud. Then that is not in use. So, so in, it enables uh, IPv6 internet accessible to the IPv4 cloud. And we deploy a, a test bed for it and it's accessible from both IPv4 and IPv6 sides. On the left is a native IPv4 access, access and uh, on the right, you, you could see how the address is converted on visiting it. And this is the, this is the uh, video service it, it could provide. So for the next, next phase, we wish you support for the IPv6 internally. And, and in OpenStack, there are currently several blueprints talk about it. And as I mentioned previously, there are two key, point, two key problems in support IPv6 internally. The first one is address assignments. And, and here is a comparison between IPv4 and IPv6. You can see that in IPv6, there are many more modes in address assignments, like the stateless uh, auto allocation and its privacy extensions. But the case is, in IPv4, the neutron generates a, a, an address for the instance and, and tell the instance why a, why a sta static manually setting or, or why the DHCP. But in IPv6, there are many modes that generate the address inside the instance, like, like Slack. So, Neutron should be extend, extend its function to generate the correct address as the instance generates. And I mean the uh, same 
a send address with, uh, on the database and the instance for the further OpenStack management, for example, the security group. And when it comes to privacy extensions, the case is more complicated. For we know that uh, privacy extensions generates a random address every, every several hours. So it, it requires a synchronization between the instance and the Neutron database to, to, to make it correct. And as we know, privacy extensions is almost used in the operating systems like Windows that is uh, almost not open source. So we think the privacy extension should be left for the future work. And the second key problem we, uh, and the second key problem is the, uh, the layer three routing structure. And as I mentioned earlier, the IPv4 in Neutron uses the privacy address as, as the internal network address. But in IPv6, inside the cloud, the internal network have, uh, um, will have a larger address pool. So we think we should use a subset of SNO network as the internal network address to guarantee the end-to-end uh, the, the -end transparency between the, between the IPv inside the IPv6 internet. So it will be a pure hierarchical routing. To implement this, this new structure, we could use two different technologies, which all, which all have, uh, both have some advantage and disadvantage uh, I will mention later. The first one is neighbor discovery proxy, and the second one is pure routing protocol. But before we get into the new structure, it will take some time for community to accept this new structure. So, and so here we choose uh, the NAT66 as a transitional choice. The NAT66 is, is de de depreciated, but the new Linux kernel support this, this function since, since 3.9.0. So we could, we could extend the uh, new chain very easily to, to implement a NAT between the internal and external network. In the, in, so the structure will will clo will be uh, closest to the to the current neutron structure, with the private network uses a unique local address, and and use net and and the multiple address per instance to implement it. We could create two two network and and bind the floating IP to the instance as, as we have always doing in the, in the IPv4. On the next step, we think the neighbor discovery proxy will be a, will be a solution for the new structure. And as the, as the NAT66, you can see neighbor discovery proxy requires no special configuration on the upstream router. And so, so you could, and uh, so it's all inside the cloud in the Neutron, on the, on the Neutron's control. But the, but the limitation of neighbor discovery proxy is that the prefix of the external network is limited to, to the 64 uh, due to the limitation of the neighbor discovery. So the, the prefix of the internal network, as I mentioned, should be a subset of the external network will be longer than 64. This, this disables some, some function like the Slack or its privacy extensions. So we could only use some pure DHCP for this. But we could also make it more flexible. You, as you can see, the, the neighbor discovery proxy limits the flag flexibility of the external network. With the ru pure routing protocol, we could build a more flexible address structure. But it, it, re it requires the OpenStack router and the physical router interact with each other to, 
to exchange the routing information here. So, so, so one who <coughs> deployed the pure routing protocol should have the control over the upstream router, which makes the uh, cloud structure more compli complicated. So um, no matter which way we deploy the IPv6, there will be more and more IPv6 clouds. <clears throat> there will be another problem that how IPv4 internet assess the IPv6 cloud. As we know that if we provide a, a, the service in IPv6, if we, if we lose the IPv4 accessibility, it will be a big problem. So we could deploy another translator at the edge of the IPv6 cloud to make the IPv6 cloud accessible from the IPv4 side. And you could see the conversion of, of address is much simpler than the, than the previous translator. So here we, by manually setting the, uh, the IPv6 <clears throat> the, the IPv6 new structure and in the Grizzly version, we deploy a, an experimental test bed for IPv6. And it's, it's also accessible both from the IPv4 and IPv6 sides. And you can see in the right that, that when you assess the, this cloud in IPv6 sites, no address translation or conversion has happened. As, as the old, old Neutron structure. So it's an end-to-end -end transparent uh, cloud. This is, the, this is the video it provides. And finally, here's the remarks. And the first is wire extended IPv4 and IPv6 stateless translator. The OpenStack can provide IPv6 service today. But to support IPv6 internally, and there are possible three approaches. And the first one is the closest to the current IPv4 model in, in OpenStack, that is the Net66, and use the multiple address per instance. And the letter one, let, letter two are the, for the new end-to-end -end transparent structure. The first one is neighbor discovery proxy. It's all inside the cloud, but the address structure will be not that flexible. And for the latter, it's the pure routing protocol. It's, it follows the IETF model, but, it's not, uh, but it requires the interaction between the OpenStack router and the upstream router. And for the long term, as IPv6 only cloud, will <coughs> as we deploy more and more IPv6 only cloud, we can provide services to IPv4 only networks while stateless IPv4 and IPv6 translator. So and we think that support the IPv6 inside the cloud in the tenant network, they, these are, uh, are the key points. But it's not, not enough to just support the tenant network. And the, we should run some, some amazing uh, application on the, on the network. So uh, let's welcome Dr. Qi Fei Zhang to give a short analysis about a highly scalable fire system for small fires. Thank you, Bai Yi. Uh, my name is Zhang Qifei from Zhejiang University. Um, so uh, we can see from the uh, PPT from Bai Yi, uh, IPv6 uh, OpenStack is ready to run on IPv6 uh, network. Uh, we think uh, the other component should be ready for IPv6 too. So we uh, want to I want to introduce a special uh, uh, file system named uh, ZUDFS to ZUDFS to you. Uh, ZUDFS is uh, 
the UDF as is designed designed to store uh, small files and to uh, store uh, s small files. So uh, uh, people will ask, why we why should we choose uh, to store s small files? And because uh, it's necessary, because it's necessary, and, and many research uh, shows that most of the files are smaller than 64 megabytes, and nearly or half of the files are smaller than 64 kilobytes. This data is from U.S. Uh, U.S. Uh, National Energy Research Scientific Computer Center. Uh, this conclusion is also com confirmed by the data from Internet, Climate, uh, Energy, Astronomy, and Biology, and uh, Auto Industry. So how we to store these small files, we have to uh, face many challenges. Uh, the first challenge uh, is the uh, file is very uh, the file uh, file, among, uh, file is massive, such as uh, Facebook's hashtag. It store uh, two hundred sixty million pictures. And the average size is uh, 800, 800 kilobytes. And more commonly, the, the file size is about several kilobytes or uh, several megabytes. The second challenge is, is uh, uh, the request is huge. And more reads than writes. Once the data uh, is right into disk. Uh, they will be accessed by many times. The third challenge is uh, hotspot data. There are many scenarios. Uh, once the data generate millions of requests, uh, the system how to deal with the millions of requests. Uh, during uh, 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 within several hours or even several minutes, but after that, uh, they will be not accessed. Uh, so we designed the UDFS. Uh, the UDFS is a high scalable file system for small files. It has many features. The first feature is uh, uh, we use two way to uh, use two way to uh, optimize the small file storage. The first way is we use multi agent to merge the bandwidth. The second way is to uh, uh, is we uh, uh, merge the, the small files on one virtual node to big files. The second feature is the status monitor. Based on this status, the system can auto-balance when, when some nodes join or decide. And during the processing of auto-balance, and some, mm, some, load, some virtual node have to copy the data to others uh, in order to simplify the uh, uh, migration. We use the state machine uh, method to simplify the processing. And to go a further step, uh, we, we can migrate the files on different uh, uh, virtual nodes in parallel. Um, that's not enough. We want to do something more. Uh, we can see ZUDFS is faithful to, 
to store realm images in OpenStack. And we also view as a small, small file storage as a service in OpenStack. Also, uh, we, can, uh, we, we will make the ZUDFS to support IPv6. And we compared the ZUDFS with the TFS. TFS is uh, uh, developed by Taobao. Taobao is the biggest e-business e company in China. Uh, this data, we can see this data means at the pink. Pink is uh, 70 megabytes per second with uh, 65 threads. And the network limits uh, is 100. 25 megabytes per second. And we can see uh, ZUDFS, the performance of ZUDFS is better than TFS uh, in uh, red and white uh, throughput and the pink. Uh, uh, that's what I want to introduce. Thank you. Uh, now we like to invite all the speakers to come up stage and we can uh, address some uh, questions. If there are any questions. Go ahead. Uh, so the question is, what kind of uh, limitation you see? Yeah, what type of use cases do you think that you should use the FS? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, that's a good question. Uh, such as Taobao or Facebook. Uh, Facebook uh, has its own uh, uh, small file uh, storage. Uh, and she named, named the hashtag. Uh, it stored, uh, stores about uh, 260 billion pictures. And the average size is eight, uh, 800 uh, kilobytes. Uh, there, there was a question here, right? Hi again. And for metadata, we we know that uh, is a is a tough problem. So for the the just in in the IPv4 is, is static there. So here we haven't, haven't come up with a, with a good, good, good choice, good, or good, good solution for this, for issue left for the future work. And it's also a, so it's a worldwide problem, I think. Thank you, we will consider it. Thank you. Yes. Just wondering, you know, Neutron actually has a lot of actually, you know, SDN uh, plugin, right? Like a uh, software defined networking plugin. And I don't, I don't really see, I don't know how, how you know, IPv6 or password correlation with uh, SDN uh, technology. Do you have any kind of reasoning about that? 
Um, I, I think for SDN, it can be on both IPv4 and IPv6. Um, so um, I think these are kind of, uh, they, they, they don't conflict with each other, so we can deploy uh, uh, SDN solutions at the existing IPv4 infrastructure, and we can also provide native IPv6 infrastructure and then deploy SDN on top of that. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, the question is the benefits of uh, uh, implementing IPv6 in Neutron. Oh. And as we know, IPv4 is exhausting. And we, we've been seeing uh, many, many people deploying IPv, uh, IPv4 OpenStack Cloud using the internal network as the external, net, as external address to simu simulate the, the function because there are lack of the IPv4 global address. So, and so, so we think the larger address pool will benefit all, all of the people who are lack of the IPv4 global address. Yes, but, but you could think about um, five years later or 10 years later when the IPv4 cost more and more money to or even to buy a small pool of address. And I think then the IPv6 will be the solution. So we, we should support IPv6 from the very beginning to avoid uh, the... Yeah. Yeah, so um, actually um, about probably 20 years ago, the whole networking community had already, even though back then we still had plenty of IPv4 addresses, but even back then people had already foreseen that uh, there are going to be a shortage of uh, IPv4 addresses. That's why IPv6 was designed and actually, and, and actually uh, the Cisco fellow Steve Deering was trying to um, um, uh, invite people to adopt IPv6, but I, I that has been like many years effort. But I, until very recently, um, people really start to see the uh, exhaustion of IPv4 addresses. So actually, uh, more and more of customers are moving into IPv6 and lots of companies, for, for example, Facebook and Google and uh, lots of operator, major operators are all moving into IPv6 because uh, we're basically uh, running out of IPv4 addresses and they're, they're there, there are no options. We just have to move on to IPv6. And there, um, there are actually two main um, benefits. One is for IPv4, because of the shortage of IPF, IPv4 addresses, we have to do lots of like private address, uh, public address, we have to do lots of address translation. Um, and lots of applications, uh, because of this whole addressing issue, cannot, with IPv4, cannot provide end-to-end -end solution. And that requires IPv6 to provide the end-to-end uh, uh, -end solution. And then the second part is uh, I, we believe IPv6 can dramatically simplify the network. And because of all these translations you have to do and all these uh, addressing schemes you have to do to uh, conserve the uh, consumption of IPv4 addresses. And we cannot afford for each entity that we like to have uh, public routable IP uh, addresses Right now, it's just impossible in IPv4. So we have to do all these uh, 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 intermediate steps that dramatically uh, complicate the, uh, the whole network. Yeah, so we do see, first of all, the necessity, the uh, great need that we have to move to IPv6. And then secondly, uh, IPv6 is going to uh, simplify the, uh, the network a lot, which, which can reduce the, the cost, the maintenance cost and everything. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, the uh, necessity to move on to IPv6 and the benefits of IPv6 it can be a whole other talk. There are lots of information, lots of materials uh, on that, and we've been actually working on uh, helping people move on to IPv6 for, for many years. Yeah.
and we can we can talk more about that offline. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.